Video number seven, 2.5 millimeter tri-lock wrist spanning plate dorsal. I'm Dr. Ryan Rose, UT Health Science Center, San Antonio. Today we will be discussing the MedArtist dorsal spanning plate for fractures and fracture dislocations. Currently MedArtist has two options for dorsal spanning plate. First you have the straight dorsal plate designed to be off of the second metacarpal. The next is a curved plate designed to be off the third metacarpal. I choose the curved plate whenever it's a fracture dislocation type where I want to be central access on the radius and the carpus. I choose the second metacarpal straight spanning plate whenever it's a purely comminuted radial column fracture. Today we will be discussing the straight plate. Here you can see me marking out the incision using the plate as my guide. I want to make sure all four holes are just distal to the CMC on the metacarpal. Next, I come proximally to mark out the appropriate position for our proximal incision. The first incision I make is over the second metacarpal. Here you have to be cautious of the superficial branches of the radial nerve and protect them. Then you can dissect down and be on the second metacarpal. While on the second metacarpal, I try not to disturb the dorsal inner ossei. One of the tricks distally is to make sure you can see the ECRL and ECRB coming into their insertions. This is your window for the plate to slide under the second dorsal compartments. Here is the ECRL tendon inserting into the second metacarpal. Therefore, your window is underneath it. I use a freer to dilate proximally. Now that we have our distal window, we're going to go ahead and go proximal to make our incision and dilate from proximal to distal. After incising through skin, we're going to identify our fascia and release that. Our proximal window is between the brachioradialis tendon and the second dorsal compartment. You can see as I lightly pull on the brachioradialis tendon, it radially deviates the wrist. As I pull on the ECRL, it extends the wrist. Special attention is needed to pay attention for the superficial radial nerve. Once our window is made and we are on bone, we begin to dilate from proximal to distal to prepare for the placement of our plate. Chapter two, plate placement. The plate accommodates consistent screw diameter of 2.5 millimeters for intraoperative simplicity. There's a 12 degree dorsal bend for neutral hand position and for power grip. Note the holes overlying the distal radius for additional fixation options. Now we will take our plate and place it retrograde. And here it is proximally on our radius. We confirm this positioning under fluoroscopy before securing its position. I first fix distally with one cortical screw in the oblong hole on the second metacarpal. Then proximally a cortical screw is placed in the most distal aspect of the oblong hole. Care is taken to ensure a neutral position of the forearm in order to avoid malreduction of the fracture. Traction is applied as needed. After securing the reduction, as well as placement of the plate, drilling and filling distally on the metacarpal and proximally over the radius is performed. And here you can see we're underneath the second dorsal compartment, sitting nicely on the radius surface with minimal soft tissue stripping. Something else I've found useful is that I will often use this plate for fixation, then also put a volar distal radius plate to maintain the reduction of the intraarticular fragments that are free floating that the ligament ataxis cannot restore. Chapter three, post-operative plan. I will then close the skin incisions with 3O and 4O monochrome. The dorsal spanning plate is left up to three months if it is the only mode of fixation. 
If I have also added a volar distal radius plate, I will often remove the spanning plate as early as six to eight weeks and begin range of motion.